Shoot yourself again. Yep. One of these days, you're gonna kill yourself. And? Nothing, I'm just saying. <laughs> Death ain't got the fucking stones to take on Percy Spencer. <laughs> Woo! Must be Friday. Kevin wasn't sure what a Friday was, so he just nodded in agreement so he wouldn't appear stupid from years of chronic substance abuse. Well, up and at him! No point lying around in bed when we could be having a few. Kevin was really sore from sleeping on the floor, and he was a little pissed off at his imaginary friend for hogging the bed. We tossed the coin, and you lost, boy! Fair's fair! Something about losing a coin toss to an imaginary goose and having to sleep on the floor of his filthy closet bothered Kevin. But he couldn't quite put his finger on it, so like most of his childhood, he decided it would be best just to pretend it never happened. That's it, Kevin. Repress the reality of your life. Feel better? Good. Now let you and me see if we can't drink enough hot liquor to make ourselves impotent. Kevin said, race you. Hey, Kevin, since you thought bring Daddy a beer. Mummy, too. So, uh, you want to go upstairs and finish? <laughs> I got a beer coming. Yous can do both. Lots of guys I know do. You mean you's not faithful to your husband? <laughs> <laughs> Join the fun, boy! Yes, Daddy just made a joke about me fucking other men! Kevin told his parents that he didn't feel like laughing because he hurt so much inside. And thus the boy becomes a man. Drink up, it helps! And how? It's been 
nice, but I've had it up to my ass with the quality time and bullshit family bonding crap. So I'll see you losers when I see ya. Yeah, I'm thinking of going to the toe and having a few. What you's gonna do, boy? Kevin told his parents that he and his imaginary friend Alan were going to drink until they were impotent. Well, your parole officer will be relieved anyway. Son of a whore! Geez, that's a lot of snow. Anyway, Thea, I wouldn't want to be a... <laughs> Especially you, good-for-nothing fucking loser, always leeching. I, I ought to... Shit! Gee, Boise, is there snow in the front of the house, too? <laughs> Very fucking ha ha, I haven't laughed this hard in years. It was an honest mistake. I mean, the front of the house is closer to the equator than the back of the house. <laughs> yeah, laugh all you want, boy, but remember this. I forgot what I was gonna say. Kevin didn't much like the idea of being snowed in, mostly because it meant having to spend so much time with his family, who he didn't really like that much. Well, as charming as it is sitting here with you two fucking boneheads, I'll be in the other room with my good friend, Bottle of Vodka, watching some TV. Baywatch is on soon, and I want to make sure I fiddle my joint looking at Hasselhoff before I get too loaded. Do yourself a favor, boy, and don't never get married. You think life is a wretched shithole now. Try spending it with the same fat broad day in, day out for years on end. Well, thought Kevin, this was almost like having a father-son talk with the old man, which had never happened before. Kevin figured this was about as good as it was ever going to get in terms of a proper family relationship, so he figured now was the best time to ask all those normal boyhood questions sons ask of their fathers. So Kevin took a deep breath and asked the old man if he would inherit the house when he and Fatty died. First off, the way we live, chances are we all die in the same time in a car wreck, house fire, or maybe an exchange of gunfire. Secondly, you don't have to wait until we die. This fucking dump's got six mortgages on it. You want the fucking debt, have at her. <laughs> Ugh, I, I ain't never sitting on that couch again. Fucking cabled out! Well, now what? Well, there's fuck all else to do, so I guess we can either talk or sit here and drink in silence. Talk? That's stupid. What the hell is there we got to talk about? I don't know. Well, it was your idea. You go first. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Stuff. Just start. said Kevin, why don't we tell some jokes? Yeah, okay. What, what's the difference between a whore and a drug dealer? A whore can wash her crack and sell it again. <laughs> right out your fucking nose, you should have seen your face. God, you look stupid. Fuck, I laughed. Remember that, huh? Remember the time that beer come out your nose and I laughed? <laughs> because Kevin was much more a fan of slapstick than cerebral humor, he found the beer coming out of his mother's nose much more funny than the witty barb his father had pulled. Your turn, Annie. Jeez, a joke. Just give me a minute to think. Okay, okay, here's a little chestnut I heard down at the toe the other night. What made me laugh near till I pissed myself? What's the difference between a vitamin and a hormone? 
You can't make a vitamin. <laughs> 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 oh, that's rich. I'd make a note of that if I could read or write. <laughs> okay, Broken Head, it's your toy now. Kevin said, what's the difference between a hooker and a mop? A mop never points at you and laughs and makes you feel so dirty inside that you're sure your soul is crying. And then you lie awake at night in a sea of tears, praying for the blackness of your heart to wash over you and obliterate the cruel world around you, as you long for the welcome embrace of death to release you from the unending torment of your meaningless and cruel existence. <laughs> Good one, boy. A bit fucking wordy, but funny. <laughs> Jeez, look at us sitting around here telling stories and whatnot and laughing like a real family. I'm gonna go take a dump. Oh, way to ruin the mood. <laughs> kind of like you do every time you take off your clothes. Well, if it's so goddamn awful, how comes you keep coming back for more? Ah, it's something to do between drinks. Kills time until the bar opens. Wh whatever, you take your pick. Do yourself a favor, boy, and don't ever grow up to be like your father. You want to make sure you treat your woman right. Say, marriage is supposed to be a sacred institution, and a man is supposed to treat his wife like she's a precious... <laughs> oh, fuck! I shit my pants! Either they tap dancing cross on a stack of nickels. If your family ain't the most screwed up pack of sons of bitches, whatever grace God green acre. Kevin couldn't help but agree. I'll tell you what, boy, forget them being not to you and all. When push come to shove, them bastards will turn on you like starving dogs. Kevin told Alan that he'd seen a starving dog once on television. Nah, you was thinking of that Celine Dion special. Just hear me out. Snow ain't going nowhere no time soon, and there's only so much food and alcohol in this here house. You better stop making a plan to make sure mine pie shit can don't screw you. Kevin realized Alan was right, and he figured that he'd better start sneaking his share and stockpiling it somewhere safe, so that if need be, he could stay loaded until springtime. Hey, Stan. What you doing? Kevin told the old man that because he was feeling all sentimental after their little family bonding session, that he figured he'd bring him some beers. Well, 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 is that right? Because, you know, it looked to me like you was trying to steal them beers and screw me out of my share. What's going on? Caught the boy stealing beers? Blood may be blood, but beers is beers. Shoot him. Fair enough. He's running away, get him! Fuck! What happened? I ran into the fucking wall. You stupid, useless, good-for-nothing, fat, uneducated, illiterate, unemployed sack of shit! <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. Hey, we got any candles? No, we're fresh out and I ain't had no time to pop down to the pottery barn this week. What with all my country club obligations and all. Candles, fuck. Like I'd know, just set something on fire. Like to set you on fire. Come again? Not, nothing? I, I think there's some candles in the cupboard, I'll just get them. Get that gun away from your useless daddy. He who has the gun gets the booze. Not to mention, you's gonna run out of smoke. And there ain't no way they mess course is gonna make it through this weather. Kevin told the bird that he'd done his best. 
but that some things were beyond its control. But you promised me some girls, Kevin. I got my hopes up and everything just to have them dashed against the rock like some piece of garbage. Kevin said, welcome to my world, Alan. Welcome to my world. We need a plan, boy. I know you's around here somewhere, Kevin. You just keep your fucking distance and no one gets hurt. You come for the liquor, I'll shoot you. Ain't no court in the world would hold that against me. It's turning into Lord of the Flies, boy. Every man for himself. We need weapons. What about that bazooka you got? Kevin told Alan that he was all out of ammunition for the bazooka after venting his frustrations against society. Okay, now this is just off the top of my head, you understand. I'm just spitballing here, right? But how about you go downstairs, get under the old man's skin, and get him all worked up so he starts firing shots at you? Then all you gotta do is dodge the bullets until he runs out of ammo. Kevin thought okay, mostly because he wasn't a hair too bright. Besides, he figured, it was the only way he was going to get some liquor. So if it didn't work out, then being dead seemed a whole lot better than being sober. So he's dumb. Nothing. Carry on. So now what? Jeez, Poisey, use your head. We's got booze and candlelight. You's got that gun to keep the boy away. Ain't it romantic? I think maybe you and me got a different idea of what romantic is. Are you telling me this don't do nothing for you? It's like when we was first dating. Nah, it weren't this dark under them high school bleachers. That's because them was outdoor bleachers, and it was the middle of the day. Don't you remember all them people watching us? Fucking nosy parkers. They wouldn't have known we was there except you kept screaming deeper. Like I had a bunch of extra cock I decided not to use. Oh, that's right. Then I kept screaming faster, faster. And you just got right going. And then, then you had just very voice stroke. <laughs> that's right. Death come knocking, but the personator weren't answering the fucking door. Yeah! Ha ha ha. Good times, good times. What in the name of sweet, holy, divine brown is going on? It must be the boy. Come for the liquor. Where's the gun at? It's on the table someplace. Feel around. I can't find... Shoot him, boy. If you were them. Come on, Kevin. Tick tock. Tick tock. What's it gonna be, broken head? You can do it, Kevin. Focus. Focus. Go ahead and shoot us, boy. Like we'd be missing out on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Our lives do suck. <laughs> the very last thing Kevin wanted to do was help her please his parents. So he lowered the gun. But just to be safe, he pocketed all the ammo to make sure Fatty and the old man didn't cap him. Obviously, we all want to get drunk. So the only way this is going to work is if we set some rules. You and your rules, you're starting to sound like the man always trying to keep me down. Listen to Rudy Ray Moore here shooting his fucking mouth off. I propose we just gather up all the booze and smokes and divide them up equally and then goes our separate ways. I propose we just gather up all the booze and smokes and divide them up equally and then goes our separate ways. Hang on, you know me and the boy can't do math. How's we gonna know if you're screwing us? You's just gonna have to trust me. <laughs> Last time I did that, you's got knocked up with this fucking idiot. <laughs> oh no, Percy, we ain't gotta use nothing. I'm on the pill. Well, I thought I was. Of all the guys what sampled your wares, I gotta be the one to fucking knock you up. What the hell you think you're doing, Kevin? Kevin told his mother that he was going to fix himself a drink to try and dull the roar of the incessant turmoil of his family life. 
Well, since you thought bring her around, fuck you and your show off your grade nine education. I don't need no high school math to figure this out. All we gotta do is make sure that when someone goes for a round, we all have one. Fine, that works. Fucking right it does. Like to see that Einstein bag liquor figure that one out. I got something, baby. Something you want. I got something, baby. Something you Are, are you okay? Kevin told the man to mind his own fucking business. Then he cleaned out Fatty's purse and lifted the old man's wallet and headed for the tow. I know it must have been horrible for you, son. Your parents, are they, are they dead? Kevin told the man that as far as he was concerned, his parents had been dead to him for years, but right now they were just passed out cold from alcohol poisoning because they were both pussies who couldn't hold their booze. Then Kevin told the man to let go of his arm before he tore him a new one with a rusty shank. What's the hurry? A promise, Kevin said, to get his imaginary friend a whore. <laughs> <laughs>